Mr. Chairman, my amendment is a simple one intended to ensure that the most accurate, up-to-date science is being used to help keep us safe and plan for natural disasters like drought. This amendment simply includes the language that was passed out of the Senate Committee on Commerce, Science and Transportation. Being from California, I understand the damage prolonged drought can do to our local agriculture and economies. Drought impacts not only agricultural communities, and in my congressional district we have 55 wineries, but also the larger surrounding economies. We must make sure we are using our resources wisely and working with full information. My amendment does just that by specifying that ongoing research related to drought should include the role of extreme weather events and climate variability in drought. Just last month, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory climate scientists and scientists from 16 other organizations announced that they have found that changes in precipitation patterns are clearly related to human activities. I would like to submit for the record the scientific article identifying external influences on global precipitation, which appeared in the, in the, journal, the journal article Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Mr. Chair. And finally, the language I am proposing did pass out of the Senate committee by voice vote. And if that committee, uh, which has both members Senator Boxer and Senator Cruz, uh, can voice vote and agree on that language, uh, I am very <laughs> optimistic about the chances of that, uh, this amendment passing through our committee. So I want to thank the Chair again uh, for accepting this amendment. And I would like to thank uh, my colleague from Florida, Ms. Wilson, for joining me as a co-sponsor and yield back the balance of my Thank time. you. the National Integrated Drought Information System. This is an important program, and the reauthorization represents an opportunity for us to do something in this committee that will tangibly benefit our constituents. The amendment I am offering today is this. The initial legislation to establish NIDIS was authorized by our former chairman, Mr. Hall. It authorized $11 million for fiscal year 2007, with a prescribed increase of $1 million in the authorization for each following year. By the final year, in 2012, the program was, reauthorized, was authorized at $16 million. Realizing, of course, that we find ourselves in a difficult budget climate presently, I see no reason why we hinder a program that is functioning well and helping constituents by reducing the authorized funding level to below fiscal year 2010 levels. Severe drought conditions can cause farmers in our country to lose billions of dollars. In many cases, the Federal Government bears a large share of that financial burden through crop insurance expenditures and disaster declarations. If we don't adequately fund the program that helps farmers prepare for and mitigate the effects of severe drought, we are simply opening up the government for deeper expenditures in the long term on the back end. One million dollars today pales in comparison to the billions that the government and small farmers will pay to recover from damage done by drought. I urge passage of this common sense amendment. Hope will speed passage of the uh, final bill, and I yield back the balance of my time. In the two year period from 2011 and 2012, the federal government expended $28 billion in crop insurance as a direct result of drought. The NIDIS program is intended to help alleviate some of the economic impacts of drought. Notably, one of the program goals is to improve drought early warning. Better early warning and impeding drought would allow states, localities, and farmers to better plan their activities so that the economic costs related to droughts could be reduced or mitigated. Every witness who has ever testified or spoken to our committee about this program has highlighted the need to improve this early warning capacity. The administration has recognized the value of this, and the fiscal year 2014 budget request included additional monies for this purpose. This isn't a goal that can be accomplished for free. It will take a sustained investment of additional monies to achieve the results we need. Unfortunately, the authorization numbers in the majority bill will preclude this work from occurring as they lock the agency into a funding cap that is below fiscal year 2014 budget request. Moreover, they cap the agency's funding at this level for the next five years, thus precluding any chance 
that the program could do this important work during this time frame. Ms. Bonavich's amendment would raise the funding levels by $1 million per year for the life of the authorization. I think this is a reasonable increase to help accomplish the goal that everyone seems to endorse. Moreover, this aligns our bill with the bipartisan Senate Companion Bill, which has already been reported out of committee. I would like to take an additional moment to make a brief comment about the nature of these budget numbers. Normally, in a long-term authorization of this sort, once expert witnesses and stakeholders have identified the important goals to be achieved by the program, we would ask the agency how much money would be required to meet these goals. In this case, we have not. In our haste to mark up this bill, <clears throat> we have not taken the time to get the information from the agency. The only witness I can recall who gave specific testimony on authorization levels advised us that we should start the authorization at $16 million and ramp up funding to $24 million after five years. So I think the General Aid's amendment is pretty reasonable. It would certainly align more closely with what the Senate is doing, which might make enactment of this bill more likely. That is, after all, what we are supposed to be doing here. And when the Federal Government is spending tens of billions of dollars per year to mitigate the effects of drought, I think it makes sense to expend a couple of million dollars to try and reduce those massive costs to our taxpayers and our communities. It is pretty clear that in this instance, our ounce of prevention will get us a proud, a pound of cure. I support this amendment and yield back.